Thank you. Yep, yep. All right. Welcome and good evening to the school committee meeting of January 11th, 2023. Uh, we are recording this meeting, and it is, I think, being broadcast on be WHCA. Broadcast. As we start all meetings, if we could start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Uh, the purpose of the executive session is to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. Tonight specifically we're discussing the WHEA collective bargaining. Uh, we anticipate we will reconvene around 6.45, but that could be a shorter, it could be longer, it's as long as the committee eats. So um, I think we have everyone outside. But I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Roll okay, call. and we'll do a roll call vote. Fred, are you still there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so can I, sorry, I should have been clear. <laughs> so your vote on the roll call is? Yes. Great, thank you. Beth? Yes. Chris? Yes. Hillary? Yes. David? Yes. I'll vote yes. Glenn? Yes. Don? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Steve? Yes. Okay, we are now in executive session. Okay. All right. Yes. Welcome back. We are out of recess. Uh, I think we're going to take a few things out of order because we have some folks here. So I'll yep. let Jeff kind of go where you want. So can we go to um, public comment first? We can oh, yes, comment. we should do that. I guess because I know there's at least one person here for public comment. So is anyone here for public comments? Yes, I mean, you're, the, you're at least the one. Yeah. The I was trying to skip over it because I know what you're going to say and you I wasn't excited about it. Oh, Chris, you can't say no. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Allison Dillon um, here on behalf of the Hanson PTO. Um, just wanted to come and tell you a little bit about the Polar Plunge that we're going to be hosting on February 5th. Um, so I know some of you are new, but most of you have, have seen and heard about this event before. Um, many have participated. Um, but we are excited to get down to Camp Kiwani and hopefully have many community members plunge into the water to help raise money for the PTO. Um, how it works is if you do sign up to plunge, it's $30, and then we uh, send you a pledge page where you can get support from family, friends, community members, etc., cetera, um, to uh, join your pledge and, and donate if they wish. Um, if you can't plunge, I totally understand, um, but we would still love for you to come and support, um, you know, come see the event, see what it's all about, cheer on, you know, your fellow, perhaps colleagues. Um, Jeff has already signed up, so I think he, he's beat everyone to it this year. Um, but, you know, happy to answer any questions if you have any, um, and, and we would love for you to join. I know Chris has done it, Hillary. Um, on my birthday last year, too. I know, it's not oh, on your birthday I'm this year. It's day not. before, right? Yeah. There's a temperature requirement <laughs> this year. It can't be 12. I know. Last year, yeah. it was, I think, the coldest we've had. Um, hopefully, this year won't be too bad. It's been pretty mild, right? Yeah. Although, tonight, it's snowing <laughs> out there. But um, I have some flyers if anyone's interested. Um, there are direct links on our Facebook page for the PTO to sign up. Um, it's all done through Eventbrite. Um, so if you go to eventbrite.com and search for Hanson PTO, you'll find it. Um, but you, you will see it on our Facebook page as well. So um, that was really it, short and sweet. But if anyone has questions, happy to answer them. Mr. Chair? Yes, Fred. Uh, have a question when appropriate? Is what? I have a question for Alex. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, is your dad doing it? <laughs> he has not signed up yet, but the more people that harass him, maybe we can get him in the water this year. He skipped last year and we weren't happy about it, but. We should all still have his like, cell phone coming from memory. <laughs> yeah. right. You'll have to text him, yeah. He'll be there for cable TV probably. He will be there show. doing community access for sure. Um, now, he needs to be in a bathing suit and a bathing cap and get in and get wet. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take the bathing suit for sure. Thank you for coming and I'm sure you'll see uh, some brave souls there. So. I hope so. Well, thank you, you for it. having me. Of course. Thank you. Anyone else here? Any pu other public comment? Anyone else want to make us go in really cold water? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. 
All right. So um, I'm going to bounce around a little bit. We have we have a couple of students here today. Every year, the Mass Association of School Superintendents uh, gives provides me uh, an opportunity to award two awards of excellence to two of our top students, and we have them here today. So I'm going to read their certificates and then ask them to come and get a nice photo op um, and be recognized by the committee. So certificate of academic excellence presented to Leah D. Cataldo, having duly qualified under the standards prescribed by the Mass Association of School Superintendents, is hereby awarded the certificate of academic excellence and witness thereof the seal of the association and the signature of the superintendent of the schools uh, hereunto asphyxiated. So Leah, congratulations. Certificate of Academic Excellence presented to Manoa J. Roberts, having duly qualified under the standards prescribed by the Mass Association of School Superintendents, is hereby awarded the Certificate of Academic Excellence and witness thereof, whereof the seal of the association and the signature of the superintendent of the schools hereunto affixed. Manoa, congratulations. You guys, committee, have any questions for our two academic excellence winners? Put them on the spot. <laughs> Any future plans you want to share? Come on up. <laughs> Only if you want to share. Yep. You don't have to. Uh, I will be. Uh, I am applying to colleges in the process, but sadly, I won't know until probably around April where I'm going. So we'll have to check back in then. Okay. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Again. Which one are you hoping for? We'll. we'll uh... Uh, this a positive vibe. Well, whatever lets me in at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Congratulations to both of you. Thanks for representing our school so well. And uh, we'll see you at graduation. Um, next item, uh, so we have our student advisory students here. Mr. Forth. All you guys, if you want to take the floor. Hi everyone, thank you for having us here tonight. As you probably already know, my name is Riley Getchell and I'm here with the Student Advisory Committee and tonight we've decided to focus on a big budget line item for this spring and that is adding foreign language back to our middle schools. I would say that foreign language has been an invaluable piece of my education here at Women Hanson and being able to continue foreign language into senior year and being able to take a college level course of foreign language before I'm even in college has been incredible. I don't even plan on taking the AP Spanish exam this year, but just being able to continue to learn at a college level before entering higher education has been incredible. And I would say that it brings a much higher academic standard to our middle school. I remember being so excited to be picked for Spanish in seventh grade and all my friends got to come to class with me and we would get out of class and we would just keep saying our vocab words because we were so excited to be learning something new. And all of us are going to speak a little on our experience with foreign language in our schools. Um, the grades below me and below Emma and Chloe haven't been able to experience this. And they're most likely going to see the effects of this in their college applications and not being able to have that advanced level of foreign language. So we think that it is a huge piece that we need to absolutely add back to our school curriculum. Hi, I'm Emma. I just wanted to share one of my real world experiences with you guys about foreign language. I have a little brother who's in the Duval Elementary School and he's fantastic. He always comes home asking, he asks me to teach him Portuguese all the time. Mm -hmm. Emma, please teach me Portuguese. Emma, can you teach me Portuguese? I'm like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to speak Portuguese. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mikey, but I, I can teach you some Spanish of what I know. And he, I asked him one day, I was like, why, why do you keep asking me to teach you Portuguese? And he goes, well, my friend, he speaks Portuguese. And I'm like, your friend? And he goes, yeah, in class, we play together. He goes, but I, I don't know how to talk to him. And I want to have a conversation. And I was like, oh, Mikey, you want to talk to him? He's like, of course. 
And I'm like, oh, well, we can try to help you learn some Portuguese. So I really think, like, like knowing that he really is striving as a first grader, first, second grader, even my sister, who's in fourth grade, wants to learn Spanish. She asks me all the words, Emma, you take Spanish class? I'm like, yeah, I'm in Spanish. The elementary schoolers, which is surprising because of such a young age they are, they're really striving to learn these new languages, which is, I think, amazing. It really, it activates all of the different strategies in your brain and it just helps a lot. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chloe. I also wanted to add on about the foreign language. Um, I feel like it is important that we should have these availabilities to us so that we can increase like our thinking. It does help with cognitive abilities and being able to learn these languages at a younger age helps become more fluent in it. So I feel like it is great for us to maybe add that into elementary schools and middle schools and keep it going for AP classes in the high school. Thank you. Hi again, I'm Noah. And kind of a foreign language adjacent subject that I wanted to touch on was more regarding the culture of the school and this kind of translates to the middle and elementary schools. But as our schools and our towns in general have become more diverse with different color, different uh, backgrounds, different cultures, things like that. I think that there's an increasing need to have some type of education on these different cultures, make these people feel represented. Because through my experience in both middle elementary school and high school, there's been very little uh, education at all regarding these. And these could be cultures from all different backgrounds, but what I've really had is just one monolith of specific parts of American history and not much outreach besides that. And I think this gives us a great opportunity for not just the teachers, but for the students of those cultures as well to express how they feel. And this kind of touches back to, I reached out on my uh, Instagram account before and asked for feedback from students throughout the summer. And a lot of them were describing how their cultures felt underrepresented at the high school specifically, and that they were even just feeling like bias within the high school, whether from students or things like that. So I just feel like integrating some type of education on the excellence of these cultures and the acceptance of everybody would lead to a more welcoming community overall, which are, could definitely help with these uh, bias and racial discrimination issues, which have seemed to become more prevalent over the past few years, which is kind of scary. But I feel like education and just learning from each other, not just from teachers as well, could be a huge implementation for this. So I don't know whether that's an educational thing, working that into the structure, or just having students talk to students and understand that these are real people, these are your peers, and you can learn so much from them. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you folks. Thank you Any questions for any of them? <clears throat> Um, if you guys don't mind, um, you know, I just want to say it's great hearing your guys' perspective and just hearing your feedback and your personal anecdotes. It helps gives us, you know, the idea of what we're here and what we're trying to accomplish when we go through this budget season and hearing just not only the impact of, of bringing back foreign language, but also how it impacts the student body and their ability to connect with one another and grow and also just not only how it prepares them as an individual in their life, but also, you know, through career preparation as well, whether it's through a vocation job or having uh, you know something ready for a college application obviously it's something we need to consider going forward and when we uh, take a vote on the budget come March you know I think we need to think about what the services uh, we're trying to offer and how it impacts the student body overall and uh, the long-term vision and what we're trying to accomplish as a committee so yeah yeah I'll just add I think it's great you shared this we can talk about it as committee members but to hear from you how you're impacted and things like that, it, it really hits home. So thank you for sharing your stories. It means a lot, and it should resonate with all of us when we vote, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add, as um, Riley mentioned, if you're a junior or younger at the high school right now, that you never had a full complement of 
foreign language in our middle school. So that was, uh, you were in seventh grade when um, they had one year of Spanish or a half year. And it was that 2019 spring when the budget needed to be reduced or changed in a sense that the 2019-2020 year was when there was no foreign language teachers at Hanson Middle or Whitman Middle. So, um, and it remains at this point. Um, so it's something that um, thank you for reminding us of and we'll look at because um, I think when uh, George had mentioned, you know, in your related arts group, bringing some components of that back, mm -hmm. I think one of my comments was, you know, build the foundation and that's what Emma was talking about, first grade, mm -hmm. right? I, I would never want to leave a group of kids out, but, you know, to get, again, maybe seventh or eighth grade, it would be great if we could do it for all, um, but really building a foundation if we can offer something to at the younger age where they, they want to do it. <laughs> they really are open to it. So, thank you. So that was a victim of budget cuts? Yes. And it was in the middle school? Two, two, two pieces of that. Yes, budget, but second, we had one foreign language teacher at Whitman Middle and one at Hanson Middle. That meant mostly every student at Hanson Middle received Spanish in eighth grade yep. and half of the Whitman school eighth grade. And did. how many years was it? Just one. It went it, for one year Georgia, and it was cut the next year? No, no, it's been going on for, for years. Multiple years yes. before that. Yeah. We right. cut it in 19. Yes. <coughs> So in, the year, in, in 2003, Spanish and French were cut from out of the middle schools completely. It was, a, it was not only a global studies class, but it was also the language. And then in, in 2000, I believe, nine, we reinstituted it with one teacher sharing at both schools, and we got it all the way up to one teacher at each school. However, when you look at it from an equitable standpoint, as Jeff said, it couldn't be there for everyone, so it became um, who do we select to go into it? A lot of it became, uh, I'm just going to say, a lot of it became political and a lot of it sure. became an issue. The difference in class sizes allowed four sections to happen at Hanson Middle School and only two sections to happen at the Whitman Middle School. But you took it over two years. Mm -hmm. So you would take it laid on top of what's called the related arts schedule. So instead of like a study hall or a class or a phys ed, you'd get that. And then you would take Spanish 1 Part A as a seventh grader, Spanish 1 Part B as an eighth grader. If you remember what we talked about in the summer, which we haven't put in the budget officially yet, is the, promote, the, the goal that we worked on in our subgroup, which talked about not only bringing robotics into a K-8 to curriculum through our library and media specialists who are already there, but also a virtual online um, piece of Spanish that can be taken during middle school so that it can be completed and then we would hire one teacher and that one teacher would be able to split the time to see the groups. You would do ingenuity for Spanish one which would also have um, on-demand tutoring through the company and then you would meet a couple of times a week with the Spanish teacher live in person that we would hire for both schools. I want to remind you that the total approximate cost of it all was $158,500 or 160, 160000 and then of that was 38000 approximately for the Sphero Robotics, and then the rest was to purchase the Spanish online, and then the investment of a human teacher to go from there. One more quick one. Yeah. And then the freshman year, you would start at Spanish too? At freshman year, anyone who completed it would start at Spanish That's too. Good. It does solve the equity issue in the sense that it is open to all. Okay. Everybody has Chromebooks now. We would purchase it for everyone, and then we would have the ability to do it because you would need a minimum of five. If you were to implement it full scale, we'd have to make it an academic subject, like English, math, science, social studies, and now Spanish. To make it equitable, we could do it. However, you would now have at the Hanson Middle School, three separate schedules, a fifth grade schedule, which is different, a sixth and seventh, and then an eighth grade schedule with five academics. At the Whitman Middle School, you could still just have two schedules, sixth and seventh, and then five academics with Spanish and eighth. You could do it in one year, but you're looking at three to five staff members because one Spanish at Hanson, two Spanish at Whitman, and then a corresponding extra reading specialist for each school because there are some students who cannot grasp that level due to their needs that you would still have to have a place to put them. We've talked right. about this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sorry, George. I can say it, right? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I just want to thank you all. Uh, it's great to have you guys back and we'll hear from you. Um, to me, the most powerful um, part of what you do is bring the voices of your peers 
here, right? And Noel particularly, that for you to be considering that um, as a way to build positive culture and make people feel like they belong and they have a voice, outstanding work, and um, we look forward to more of that. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Really work, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, congratulations. It's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, Brock. Gabby, uh, Brock, uh, right now uh, I'm going to ask uh, Gabby from our, our Whitman Will Brockton Area Prevention Collaborative Student Survey uh, request. She has a survey request for you. We've done the survey multiple years and uh, she's here again. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Gabby Sullivan and I am a grants manager for High Point Treatment Center and what that really means is that we get to support Whitman Hanson Will, the local substance use prevention coalition um, with grant funding to do what we need to do to address youth substance use in the community. So today I am just requesting approval to survey students again this year. Um, we do it annually. Some years I've reported back out results to you all um, and then seek approval throughout the year to survey again. So the survey is a, uh, should be in your packets. You it's it. um, administered by, by my evaluation team, Kelly Research Associates. It's been transferred to being online this since COVID, um, so students receive it online. It's confidential, um, administered by school staff, and it takes about five to 10 minutes to take it. It's administered to about, um, to all students in uh, grades <laughs> six through 12. Um, and parents receive a consent form before they take it uh, with the help of the principals and then we receive the results back, share them back with you and use it for basically strategic planning for the year, um, having convers important conversations with students like in SAD and they get to really plan their initiatives in partnership with my team um, to do the work that we do. So my. My ask of you all tonight is to be able to survey students again this year, around February, March. What grades get this survey? Uh, six through 12. Okay. Sorry, Pierre. Oh yeah, go ahead, Fred. Uh, in, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve this uh, survey as we've done every year, and also point out the fact that it's done when we get reports or any analysis, it's completely anonymous. Yes. We have just results, nothing else, no identification. Okay. Second. <laughs> any discussion? Nope. Okay, we'll roll call vote. Fred? Yes. Beth? Yes. Chris? Yes. Hillary? Yes. David? Yes. Pablo? Yes. Black? Yes. Don? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Steve. Yes. Okay, yeah, you're all set. Thanks, Thank Gabby. You. Look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna bounce around a little bit more. Dr. Jones, High School Program of Studies. In your packet, uh, you have the Program of Studies and, and Dr. Jones's uh, proposals. I believe that were approved by a school council yesterday? Correct. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, if you look at the memo that you've been given for the Program of Studies, I will jump around a little bit, but just in an effort to simplify it. I, so I'll, I'll call out some numbers and there are some batch things that are happening. If you look at number four through 11, and then you look at um, number 19 through 24, those are all just normal rotations of courses so that students have a larger selection of courses to choose from and that they have a better opportunity to get different experiences as they go through high school. Uh, that has to do with staffing issues and, and the ability to fill classes and, and choices. If you look at number, I'll hit these individually, number one, you notice that we removed examinations and assessment. Um, that was a holdover from when we got rid of midterm exams and finals. Midterm exams and finals are not coming back. They're removed permanently, so we took it out of the program of studies to avoid confusion and have erroneous information in there. If you look at 12 and 13, those are also removed courses. One is the French practicum and one is the Spanish practicum. It seems like that happens to be a common theme tonight. Um, those are removed because that is offered after students have received a certain amount of instruction in those courses, have reached a certain level, and they go a step further with it. With students coming into the high school starting at French and Spanish 1, they don't have the opportunity to hit those levels, so we don't have numbers for those courses, and if we don't run those courses repeatedly, we don't put them in the program of studies. So that's why we're removing them from the program of studies. 
If you look at number 28, health has been removed. We're removing health from the curriculum, from the program of studies, um, as a standalone single course. And I'll explain what we're doing with number 25, 26, and 27 with that removal. What we've done is we've taken the health course and broken it up into two different courses, one with appropriate topics for your freshmen that come in. Typically health is taken as a requirement freshman year. And we've broken that between freshman and sophomore year. So we have the topics that are appropriate for your 14, 15 year olds and the topics that are appropriate for your 15, 16 year olds. We have then combined those with PE courses. It's not gonna turn into a full year course. It's still gonna remain a semester course but what that has allowed us to do is create the freshman course, Freshman Fitness and Wellness. So that course will incorporate and fulfill the PE requirement for students and the health requirement, or the first part of the health requirement for students. Then in 10th grade, when they enter in 10th grade, they still need that second component of health class. And so we take that and pair it with a PE class, but what it also allows us to do is give students a choice for PE or a clearer choice. The two courses that you see, 26 and 27, is our 10th grade courses, you have Wellness 2. One is Net Sports and Cooperative Games for a PE track. Those are your students that are focused and drawn more towards your competitive games, net games, sports, so forth. Number 27 is Wellness 2 Fitness, Dance, and Yoga, and that's more of a wellness track for students that are more interested in moving that way instead of your competitive sports avenue. That's done a couple of things. So that's the creation of three new courses by getting rid of the health course. What that allows us to do as the school is it frees up the freshman schedule. When freshmen come into the high school, their first year is pretty much scripted. Um, there's not a lot of room for choice or anything like this. By doing this move, we actually open up their schedule so that they have a choice for different courses their freshman year coming in. In conjunction with the idea that by doing this, we can now also assign a seminar, which is the fancy word for study hall, basically. Um, we can assign a seminar to every freshman coming in the building so that it's more of a soft landing for freshmen who first enter into high school. They're used to taking a smaller number of courses and course load than they are when they get into high school. That works, this is all tied together, that works with our MTSS support system. We have specific seminars for students that are struggling academically or social emotionally, and by giving every student a seminar and offering MTSS the way we do every period of the day, we're able to first assign struggling students that are coming from high school, coming from middle school into the high school, into those MTSS seminars, and move them back and forth fluidly into a seminar so they don't lose any ground in their academics. We don't, so in other words, if they're struggling in math, we don't pull them out of math to help them in math. They stay in math and we pull them out of a seminar where they don't have that to get direct support from other teachers. Those are those three courses. Um, if you look at number two, that required us to update the graduation requirements to reflect changes in PE and health. That's all that is, that's just attached to those three courses. Looking at three, we've added the language right below that regarding English, lang English learner education so that we have a clearer definition or explanation of what we're doing for our English language learners. Uh, lost time. That's... <laughs> <laughs> music played for me before, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, that means that's the timer. Yeah, that's the timer. <laughs> Um, <laughs> numbers, that was, that was good. That was numbers four through, uh, four through 11 I explained, 14, um, there's quite a few courses listed under that. You'll see Algebra two Pre-Calc, um, Honors, you'll see Pre-Calc Academics, Statistics, Marketing, Sociology, Anatomy, and phys Physiology. What that um, shows is the growth in our dual enrollment program. We sat down at the table with Quincy College this past year and we are working to expand and continually expand our dual enrollment opportunities for students to go along with our innovation pathways work that we're doing so that we have more access for students to higher level courses and the ability to gain college credit before they leave school um, as an avenue other than a high stakes test such as um, your AP exams and things like that. Your number 15 and 16, those are corrections. When we were shifting the curriculum, we had to create the courses 
that would allow us to continue that education and math and that pathway that was appropriate for students who were caught in that shifting curriculum. Our curriculum is all squared away now, so now we're getting rid of those because we're not offering those and students are now back on track with the new pieces of curriculum that we have. Number 17, we are adding AP Microeconomics. 18 is AP Macroeconomics. So we're, we have the ability to add our two new AP courses, Micro and Macroeconomics, that fit in with the idea of getting students the economic education that we think they need before they leave. Uh, micro obviously being the small household type things, macro being the global um, type of things. And it also offers opportunities for students educationally as far as AP credits go. Then number 29 and 30 are name changes. Um, our introductory physics will be, our introductory physics academic will be changed to conceptual physics. And that's going to be a study of the basic principles. You'll see that in the, deep, the description, it really lays out what the difference is. Basic principles for the conceptual physics, and then you get into practical applications for what used to be honors physics, which is now going to be physics, energy, and motion. And that has to do with practical application, problem solving, and requires a higher math content to it. And those are the changes. Um, the school council discussed it. With the work we've been doing on the vision of the graduate, they think these changes that we're making are moving clearly in the direction of what we believe we want to have for students here at Whitman Hanson Regional High School, and they approved it unanimously. I'd be looking for a motion to approve the program of studies as presented. So Second. Any discussion? Questions? I just have a yeah, question. Um, thank you for presenting this. I remember last year when you presented about um, removing the midterms and final exams, there was conversation around um, similar uh, portfolio type of presentation and I wonder if you can share anything if, if it's being added to program of studies or how that might be offered in lieu of those midterms and finals that some classes might be doing because I know I've had some parents ask about you know no exams no that's that's a good question about the whole portfolio idea because that really leans towards project-based learning yeah. and assessments along that Avenue okay. um, right now that's a that's a whole different discussion on grading and how grading occurs. Um, and right now, we don't have any large setups like that where we have portfolio examinations. Um, where we're moving right now, I had mentioned the vision of the graduate, where we're moving with that is we're coming up with areas or pillars under this new vision that will be rolled out with the strategic plan that will then come out in the form of rubrics that are then folded into assignments in the classroom that will be tracked by Naviance. Um, our software through our student support system, our um, student support center, and then we will be looking at displaying student work because they'll, su they'll submit that to Naviance so that we can see they're actually moving towards our vision for them. Um, and then you'll be seeing the projects and the assessments in the project form. Okay. We have some of our classes, but they're still, those are still mostly like your related art classes um, and so forth where they have projects as your types of assessments. Okay, thank you. Oh, I think Hillary Go was ahead. first. No, you. Oh, sorry. Um, I see over there. Me? <laughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Jones, for this. Um, I just have a question about the two new classes, the AP Microeconomics and AP Macroeconomics. Are you thinking, what are the prerequisites for those classes at that point? Are there any, or are any students able to take them? We don't have any prerequisites right now, and any students are able to take them. Okay. We're expecting, um, we had talked about it before, but then this thing called the pandemic hit, um, mm -hmm. and we decided there were other things to focus on. But um, we had discussed them before, and we're looking, we're expecting that microeconomics will be filled before macroeconomics, because macroeconomics is conceptually a little harder, when you're talking about global markets and things, it's a little harder to, harder to wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sorry, Hillary. Um, I had questions, I have two questions. Um, the first one, so for the foreign language, you know, we talked about that. If do you offer independent studies? So if a student, so if a student like took a course online, like from eighth grade to ninth grade, took Spanish one online, and I don't know how you would determine their proficiency, but I'm sure, and they could test out of Spanish two, so that by the time they were a senior, they would be eligible to take the AP, or is that AP, the, or is that past AP? I'm sorry, the no, foreign the, language the, ones you were talking about? The practicum, those courses, the practicums? 
It could be it could be at the same time as AP instead okay. of AP. It could be after AP. Um, it's for a deeper study in yep. in that world language. Um, one of the things that Mr. Farrell mentioned uh, that makes a lot of sense is before, when when world language gets put to, into a middle school, it's got to be put in in a, in a way that's appropriate so that when students do leave middle school, they can't go into a level two world language at the high school, mm -hmm. where that, because the way it was offered before, that, that wasn't happening. So students would be exposed to it, but then they'd come and they'd be in a level one. Yeah. What you heard Mr. Farrow talk about is we, that will allow us to put students in level two starting their freshman year and move along further so that if they do have a passion for the language or an interest in the language, they'll have that ability to move forward. Okay. Um, the other question I had was about midterm exams also. Um, and. I have thoughts about them being yeah, so experiencing one, them. One quick thing, I just want to make sure we don't veer too far. So, because I know your question was, we're in program of studies, but it was really about exams and grading. So, well, so mine isn't about okay. grading. So, I guess, and maybe this is what John is hearing. So, if we have students who are going to college, they're going to have to take a big test eventually, right? And so, I guess. The question is, and I don't disagree with getting rid of midterms and finals, and I am probably, we're probably on the same team with that. Um, but because I think that families are, my kid's not gonna be prepared for college because they're gonna go to college in freshman year, they're gonna take a math class and they're gonna have a midterm and a final and they've never had to study for a big, massive test before. So, and I, I project-based learning, that's not that, but where are there, in, in the vision of the graduate and things like that, are there plans to, give students who are going to be going to college that experience. That's not taking AP, that's not an MCAS, because we know those are very different than having to take a midterm or final. That maybe is a bigger question, but I think that is gonna be a concern, because if you look historically around towns and schools around the South Shore, you've seen schools get rid of them for a couple years and then put them back in and then get rid of them for that reason. Um, so. You know that, that I don't know if that's veering off of no, no, studies. No, no, yeah, I just, um, I, I, well, I just think like again, if we're, especially if we're getting like parental concerns, the because I get I, I always get this feedback, right? Yeah. Like, hey, I didn't know you were going to talk about that. So the agenda tonight was program of studies. Sure. If we want to have a conversation about grading and testing and finals, to me, we should put that on the agenda so we give everyone the opportunity to present that and attend. Well, I don't. I guess I don't understand why midterms and finals are in the program of studies. Wouldn't they be in the handbook? Or is both. that a they're, program they're of studies? Both. They're both. Okay. So maybe I guess that's, maybe that's part of where the confusion yeah. is coming from. So that that yeah. yeah. So that's that's my I, again. I am probably ninety percent sure you and I are on the same team when it comes to midterms and finals. Yeah. Um, but I know that that is certainly feedback. I know that that's a conversation that we have at my school. If we don't give them, how are we going to prepare them for college? You know, um, I am very well aware that there are so many other ways that we can prepare students for college than taking a ninety-minute exam mm -hmm. um, that's worth ten percent of your grade. But um, just like those conversations, like how, how that's gonna be happening so that for parents who might be concerned about that, like how are how is that getting across them that yes, they're gonna be okay. Hearing what that's you're saying, lot. probably 95% of the same team. But, yeah. <laughs> um, do you want me to answer that, Chair, or no? Should I? Veer so I mean, I think it's up to you. I, I didn't catch the that it was in the um, program of studies. So if it's in there, then that's fine. I just yeah, I, I just don't want to shortchange anyone from having like if we want to have a deep. I don't think that's. If we want to have as a committee a deeper role, conversation yeah. about that, like I think we should. But I just want to make sure we put it on the agenda so if parents do want to come, they can. That's all. Yeah. That's all. But I, I think we're already there. So I think exactly. If you could do that, that's the school council already. Yeah, that superintendent. Sure. Sure. I'm going to put the music back on. Music. Exactly. Get that music playing. Sure. Yeah, I like it. As long as there's not a buzzer, it's all right. Yeah. Um, the short answer is yes, that, that is a concern. That is the holdover argument for most schools. How are we preparing our students for college? Mm -hmm. Completely ignoring the idea that there are many ways that we can prepare students for college besides that. But now, there are many colleges, um, except for maybe your Ivy Leagues or your, your, your BCs, your private schools, many colleges are moving away from the midterm and final exam format where students are able to opt out. Students can take a final if they didn't like their first grade in the course. Um, a lot of them are moving more towards that project-based learning that we were talking about yeah. um, and handing things in like that. So we're not looking at, I mean, a lot of us are used to the blue book, right? Um, which gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. But, um, a, lot of, a lot of your schools are moving away from that. Yeah, good. Awesome. Chair? Yes, Fred. Uh, I had a question, actually two questions. Sure, I have two. Uh, not three, though, two. Uh, no, no boy. Uh, Within the uh, changes that we've made and what our offerings are, 
within the local area. Uh, there are courses that we're offering. They're not available to students in other towns. You know. Yeah, I, know. I, I, I mean, know. I can say I, yes. I could say yes. I would say there. I would say there are, but I can't. I can't list down yes. A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, but I would say yes. We do have some differences. Fred, just to answer that, the, our program of studies is very detailed, and what Chris is doing right now is pretty progressive. Yes. And other districts are going to be catching up. The macro micro piece is huge. Mm -hmm. The innovation pathways is huge. Mm -hmm. um, the combination of health PE is is, is exciting mm -hmm. um, because we have students that don't want to engage in health and PE now, and it's a way, it, it's problematic to, to, to raise that bar for them, to have them have an opportunity to do some different things is, is pretty good. So yes, we, uh, you know, I know Hillary's in the same town that, that she teaches in that we go to. Our program of studies, Knox Pembroke's, you know, it's, it's comparable and we, we have some good things going on. So for that, I do want to commend you, Dr. Jones. That's uh, exciting when we're, when we're offering our kids more opportunities than available elsewhere. And the second part, uh, uh, real quick, any budgetary impact? To, to this, no, you're not, he's not looking for anything at this point. The budgetary impact would be if we decide to look towards modernizing our middle school, middle school uh, foreign language to assist the high school moving forward. Great, thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, otherwise we'll move to a roll call vote. Fred, while we got you? Yes. Beth? Yes. Chris? Yes. Hillary? Yes. David? Yes. I'll vote yes. Glenn? Glenn, yes. Don? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And Steve? Yes. Okay. You're good. Thank you very much. And while you're up there, do you want, we're going to go right into your global travel. Do you want to present your, your field trip? That's all, they just have to, the committee has to approve your field trip for uh, for Spain, Portugal. For Spain, Portugal. Um, I, don't, I don't have any of the paperwork with me. It's all right, you can just stand there and answer questions so, if you need okay. to. Yeah. <laughs> Are you just there, just in case somebody has a question? Okay. You don't have to present them. I'm not sure there'll be a lot of We're going to Spain and no. Portugal. I just like to have them up there. Okay, just make them squirm. Make okay, so, so yeah. in the interest of sparing Dr. Jones, so I think you all have it in your packets. Yep. It's the global trip uh, to Spain, and there's no cost to the district. So, could I entertain a motion for the field trip? Second. Second. Any questions for Dr. Jones? Just to reiterate, this is the trip that uh, Mr. Davidson runs pretty much annually? Yes. Yes. Yeah, unless uh, that's the I know trip. <laughs> tremendous amount of kids have had a uh, fantastic learning experience on these trips. And there is no budgetary cost to the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. It's all funded by parents. It's the same tour group that we use every single time. Correct. Steve? Can Emma and his sibling get a free pass? <laughs> right. Wow. Can she go? Take That's good. Good catch. I like it. Get that Spain. Portuguese. He's trying to get your sibling a discount. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. They get to practice Portuguese. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, any other further discussion? No. All right. We'll go to a roll call vote. Fred? Yes. Beth? Yes. Beth? Yes. Chris? Yes. Hillary? Yes. David? Yes. I'll vote yes. David? Yes. Don? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And Steve? Yes. Okay. Thank you, you Chris. You're all set. Thank, Thank you twice. Thank you. Thank you. Getting back a little bit. Uh, Dr. Shanann Weiss is here, our director of MTSS and Equity, to provide you uh, a report. Um, none of the principals are speaking today. Uh, Nikki's, got, he's, Nikki's got the podium. She's got a handout for you, but she's also going to put it on the board for people to see right. at home. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, George, are you going to... Oh, you guys can go. Yes, I do my best. <laughs> it's a riveting performance. <laughs> oh, I can do it. Okay. All right. So just so we're all um, clear that what we're doing here with our MTSS um, framework is putting us in compliance with everybody's, uh, Every Student Succeeds Act and we are following what DESE has laid out as the um, DESE's MTSS blueprint, just so um, you all are aware of that. Oh, I don't know. I got, I got it, I got it. Um, so um, we are, what I decided to do with this presentation was just to, um, focus on a couple of key areas. 
um, curriculum being one because we've made a substantial financial and professional contribution and um, commitment to that area. So I thought I wanted to update the committee. Um, so we are taking a systems approach to our curriculum. What that means is we are looking both our horizontal alignment as well as our vertical alignment. In terms of our horizontal alignment, we have our coordinators at our different levels who are looking and making sure that students in the same grades are having like experiences. And then our vertical alignment involves making sure that our coordinators are meeting together to um, ensure that when a student matriculates, that the skills that, um, that they have, we are hoping that they receive in the fourth grade is what they have um, and that they're prepared for them in the fifth grade. So um, we, our students meet um, with our, um, pardon me, our coordinators meet um, elementary, secondary, and our principals um, are meeting together. Our system, <clears throat> our intervention teams are meeting together, making um, data-driven decisions. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking. Get a little yeah. no, okay. Breathe. I know. Go to your safe space. <laughs> You're fine. You're good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I presented last time, so I don't know what. Um, I think I was overthinking it. It was yep. Chris's great performance that, <laughs> and a commendation from Fred that now. Um, so, so to go back, we are our we have our intervention teams who are meeting together to review data on our students, making sure that what we have purchased, what our curriculum and what we were laying out is actually what is um, what our students are um, succeeding in. So um, we also, I'm gonna skip ahead one to data. So right now we are in the process of um, our mid-year um, diagnostics. The pre preliminary results are very promising. What we have hoped our students are um, gaining and the growth we are seeing amongst our students. Um, we want to pair that information with some qualitative data as well. So we have this quantitative data that is supporting that what we are what we are hoping that our students are receiving and achieving is bearing out. And now we want to pair that with the qualitative data and say, how are you feeling about your experiences in school. We've done it at the high school level with MCAS, and it was really interesting. So our students, um, we know that they did well. We did that MCAS presentation earlier in the year. We know that they're, they're, they're meeting their MCAS requirements, um, receiving their high school diploma, um, which is wonderful. But how are they feeling? And the data that we got back was really interesting. Not surprising, anxiety, stress. Mm -hmm. So we are taking that information and now making really informed decisions like how, what are our short-term plans and on how to address that? And what are our longer-term plans? So our short-term, in the immediate, we were able to say to students, some of them thought it was affecting their GPA. And we were able to say, no, it doesn't impact your GPA. It's an important assessment for sure, but it doesn't affect your GPA. They thought it was time. It's not time. You can take the day, relax. Um, Long-term plans, we are looking at creating a softer start for them on those days. Like, come in, we're going to provide you with breakfast, we're going to have some soft music, we're going to have some, you know, time for you to relax. Maybe we'll do some um, uh, calming strategies, meditation. So this all came out of, yes, the quantitative data, we're doing what we need to do for our kids. But the qualitative data, what is your voice telling us, what are you sharing with us, is letting us know how we can help. So it was like, I did, these kids were not a plant, but I was like, well, we're doing that. Um, so like, we're, we're, we're getting voice. The English learners were another group of students that we are trying to get the voice, and it was great to hear. Um, our, our English learner numbers have grown substantially. We have just under 200 students in our district. So we want to hear from them. We did focus groups with those, those kiddos. So what, what is your experience? From the, that information, we learned um, short-term plan. We're meeting, I'm partnering with the director of food services, and we're going to introduce some um, lunch, uh, different lunch options to represent the, the, the different student groups. And the students are the ones giving us the recipes. Um, so we share that with um, Nadine. So short-term. Longer-term, the culture piece that Noah talked about that came up. So how do we incorporate more cultural diversity um, opportunities into 
our um, students experiences. So we're, we're pairing and we're looking at that quantitative data and that qualitative data. So going back, um, uh, data. So that data piece is important and then, oh, and then professional development. We're using our district resources. So we have some wonderful options that we have incorporated from the um, outside, and we've got brought in wonderful experts, but we have a lot of in-district expertise as well, and we are tapping into that. So again, Noah commented, or the student commented on um, wanting to know more about culture. Well, we're partnering with Jesse around this, but we're also tapping into our own um, expertise um, around culturally responsive classrooms and trying to work on those practices. We are tapping into, um, we have a, a growing English learner um, teaching population, and those, those teachers bring a bunch of experiences from different schools, so now we've provided PD to our other teachers here. Inclusive practices, we have a lot of experienced co-teachers, so we've created some um, PD opportunities for those as well. And then um, because of that vertical and horizontal alignment, our coordinators are working together to not only say, what are we doing in ELA, what are we doing in math, but also, how does what we're doing in ELA can be um, reinforced in history, in science? So we have a lot of great um, PD happening in district that we are creating through this MTSS framework. Now I got my stride. There you go. <laughs> yes. um, so, um, so overall, I wanted to touch on this. So our MTSS framework, we are looking at curriculum, we are looking at intervention, we are looking at social emotional needs of our students, hearing their voice, getting that quantitative and qualitative data, pairing those together. Um, some great things happening. In addition, I wanted to just take a, my, my moment to talk to you a little bit about our English learners. So as um, it was shared earlier, and it was really exciting to hear about the Portuguese, um, speaking students, we do have in our district now 12 languages represented. So the majority are um, from Brazil and speak Portuguese. Um, we are, just, as I said, just under 200 L's and Bells. We are currently right now in the middle of our access testing, which means that we are testing for our students, um, our English learners, in proficiency for um, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. This is a, this is. They take the MCAS too, so I can't even say it's the equivalent to the MCAS for them, but it is as, as important for these students. This is a big time for our students, and I think our district is becoming more aware of the fact that this is um, significant for that group, and we're being more mindful of that. So again, like we want to do for MCAS, so <coughs> start welcoming those students, giving them, um, uh, taking some other assessment requirements off, and just creating space that helps them to do their best work. Um, we also, in terms of making sure that we're hearing voice, we have partnered with families and we've created our English Learner Parent Advisory Council. We had a meeting, our first meeting in October. We had our um, November, December meeting and our next meeting of next month. And that is growing. We have um, close to 15 parents attend. That was pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have these pocket talks and talk, um, could you? Um, here's our. Uh, it's the greatest thing I've done today. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. <laughs> um, so we have, we purchased these pocket talks, um, which is a handheld translation. Um, so if a family comes in and there's nobody available, we can have um, translators available, and it and it will um, uh, do the translation. So you can speak in English, and it will talk back in the, the language. Um, you can set it has 145 languages. Um, we also are utilizing Talking Points, which is um, a two-way translation app. So you can type in English and it will tra translate behind the scenes to the family. So it's great. And it has increased um, our communication and our ability to reach our families. And then lastly, we were able to offer an adult English class in the fall to under Title III, um, using Title III funds. Um, and we will be offering another one in the spring, and those are for our, our families and our parents. And we're, we're teaching them some English words to help them access um, education for their students, for their kids, but also community. How to make a doctor's appointment, how to make a dentist appointment, how to um, come into the school and ask for what you need, who to ask for. So those are some of the things that we are doing under MTSS and in my 
equity world right now. Um, and so I will just um, so I will just say thank you, thank you for thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> um, uh, wiggles there, and then um, I just want to end with it takes each of us um, to reach all of them. So thank you for your time um, tonight. Any questions? What's a felt? I know what oh. an L is, but I don't know oh, what a felt is. Question. Sorry, and I do this all. I use my acronyms. There's so many acronyms everywhere. <laughs> so. Welcome no, to education. Go ahead. Former former English learner. Former former So so going back to that access test, that's why it's so important. We're looking to see if our students have English profici proficiency yep. and in academic language and um, academic English because. They may be able to speak, speak, possibly right? read, but, but it's really all of yes, all of the are they needs. academically learning? Yeah. And so there's a certain qualifying um, score that they need before we can consider them a fellow. Yep. Great question. Thank you. Yeah, so, thanks, for Chris. Um, yeah. Just thank you very much. I, I, I love the uh, program. Um, appreciate all the efforts. Um, it, it's just I love the approach to this. I think this is uh, something that you know whenever this type of thing is implemented where you're, you're actually actively trying to learn, right? It, it's not like, to me, I think we get accustomed as parents or professionals, whatever, to accumulate this knowledge, we know best, here it is, right? When we can actually reach out and, and, and ask our kids, you know, to communicate their perspective back to us, I think those are the moments we learn and, and make the most strides as parents or teachers or whatever. So I love this work and I think it's, it, it's, uh, it's crucial to, um, doing what we can to provide the best experience for our students. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, and I, I think too, I just, just what these kiddos were saying, I was like, you know, they're seeing it, and I was like, we're, we're, we're hearing you, yeah. mm -hmm. and we're trying That's to awesome. meet That's you where you are. Yeah. Don, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, outstanding presentation, thank, thank you. Thank you. Everything thank from you. The, the menu options and the food yes, for diversity food. to um, the adult classes, didn't know we were even doing that community outreach, it's amazing. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question on the intervention slide yeah. on the front. Um, it mentions compliance to early literacy K to oh. at least three regulations mandated beginning. Can you elaborate on yes, July 2023 regulations? Yes, yes thank you. Um, so, um, so coming out of DESE, um, July 1, 2023, all schools K to at least three will be required to screen at least twice um, screening for dyslexia. And I think we, that, that also came up earlier. And we are already meeting that requirement and then exceeding it. Because we're doing K to five, and we are using, um, we're already using the required screeners and we're doing it three times. So we are already in compliance with this mandate coming out. Um, so that's why, thank you for pointing that out. Um, so that's why that one is included in there. So um, while I did, it's wonderful data and it helps us make informed, thoughtful decisions about students and with, if they need intervention, um, it's gonna be required soon okay. anyways. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So thank you. Hello. I just have a question. Um, so looking at the data, um, is there a plan, and I don't know if this is a George question or a you question, um, to look at, like I, my kids today came home and were like, I can't do my eye ready because I'm doing my diagnostic. Like they're really amped about their diagnostics, like <laughs> really into it. Yeah. Um, and so is there any plan to look at, you know, if we're, if we're looking at the multi-tiered and we were, you know, in January, so MCAS is coming, like high school it's earlier, but this, I guess it goes for both. But is there a plan to look for the elementary students fourth grade, I guess, particularly fourth, fifth grade, and then maybe middle school, but you don't do I-Ready in the middle school, right? No, just, okay, yeah. just kidding, yeah. never mind. Eight, eight, nine, seven, nine, seven. Okay, so, because I-Ready is tied directly to the the frameworks with yep. MCAS, so is there a plan to sort of like merge those data points to say like on this mid-year um, math diagnostic, this fourth grade student scored here, we're gonna compare it to their third grade math score to see if they're improving or like to tier, you know, and, and I think I talked about this and I'd asked this question when you presented the MCAS data, I, I've, a lot of our focus, as it should be, is on getting the students who are sort of below, above, right. but also making sure we're getting the students who are mi in the middle up, uh, you know? Right. So looking at it from all those points, is there a plan right. to do that? Yes, yeah, so we are looking yeah. at data, yeah. 
yeah, the data analytics, um, um, and creating a dashboard for just exactly what you're talking about. And because when our data teams are meeting, they want all that data at the ready, and you don't want to be pulling all your different papers, right? So when we can pull up this dashboard that we can input, um, that we can input what you're talking about, their IRIN scores throughout the years, mm -hmm. because now we're having all of these data points yeah. on them, plus their MCAS scores. Um, whatever we want to ask for, we can pull up in the dashboard, and then we're hoping. I have, we have to. I have to talk to um, the um, company we're using because I would also like to pair anything. So we're doing that qualitative, and we're going to be actually surveying our students five, five through. Um, well, about, like I said, about how they feel about the curriculum and how they feel about instruction. And so is there a way to actually pull in any of like those data points as well? I'm not sure. But yes, to your point, we are hoping so that when we have these data team meetings, we can look and see not just growth for one year, but growth over yeah. multiple years. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and the only thing I would add is that in, it, when you test these students in iReady and that diagnostic, you get two scores. You get the yep. typical growth score, and then you get the stretch growth score. And the stretch growth score is the one that compares best to MCAS preparation, and then hopefully it merges with the MCAS scores. Yep. So, so that is why. But this Paul Miniuti is the person from Data Analytics who we've created these dashboards with, because if you really get going in these dashboards on students, you could then say, let's put attendance in there. Mm -hmm. So then you could track how students are doing based on their attendance or their lack of attendance, based on their ethnicity, based on whatever data element that we track of students, you'd be able to track it to have this piece of, here's how they feel, here's when they come, here's how they're doing, and then here's where they're going. You mean so. there are other variables to educating kids? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're getting. No, I think that's great, that's, 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 that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, the preliminary, preliminary results are looking really good. Yeah. And that's we're good. finding that our sixth graders are doing even better, and they've had it, because to your yeah. point, they had awesome. it in the elementary, we only just purchased mm -hmm. it for the, the um, middle school six to eight, but I think that's promising to say, oh, our sixth graders, performing really strong, that's evidence to say, you know, this is working. And so to create that long, that long view, that vertical alignment all the way through so that we are um, building on the skills, the prere prerequisite skills that we want, I think it's 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 trending and it's, it's, it's suggesting that we are making strides in that way. Awesome. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So I asked Nikki to do about eight minutes, but if you guys have a couple hours, if you want to hang out with Nikki for a while, th this is really good stuff. I mean, yes. and it's good. Pre it's it's really good, and we're looking at the big picture. And I think the key piece when how they feel. Yeah. Nobody asks that question. Yeah. You know, and they're responding, and we're making adjustments to that. So. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Yes. Yeah. Um. Relatively simple. Uh, I'm, I'm working on our annual report, the district annual report to both towns. It'll be submitted on the 23rd of, of January. If any committee member wants to send me a blurb or anything like that, that, because you're members of the district, I can include that. We haven't done that in the past. But if you feel like you would like to send, give me something to add to my executive report or as a school committee thought, um, please get it to me You know, before the 23rd. And sometimes I've even submitted it after the 23rd or adjustments to that after the 23rd. Um, both towns have been pretty flexible. Uh, I, in this annual report, I gather data from the entire district. Um, so there's multiple areas. Different schools are giving me things. The high school is giving me things, business. And then I do an executive summary. So the, the, the district piece of the annual report is usually the biggest piece of the annual report. So I'm willing to take any type of uh, paragraph, any type of, of information you want to give me from my executive summary. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we jumped around a little bit, but before we forget, or yeah. before I forget, yeah, we'll do the meeting minutes because um, <laughs> I'm going to miss them and then we'll be further behind. So, uh, and I did ask Michelle, so I know there was a couple. Uh, we're doing. Some, they're kind of transitioning through some cleanup. So some of these are a little bit older. I think goal is by next meeting to kind of get caught up on some of the older ones. So. Um, well, I'd, like, I'd love to take all three of these together, but that's probably too dangerous, so we'll do them one at a time. Mr. <laughs> uh, Chair? Yeah, go ahead, Fred. I do have, I would like to make a motion to amend the meeting minutes of June 22nd, and so, the amendment would be to reflect that I was not absent. Second. Okay, so 
Uh, yes. So uh, how about how about can you can you pull back the motion in the second for a second? Because we haven't even we have we don't have a motion. Right. <laughs> we don't even have a motion for the minutes yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so before before we amend, I think. Or fine, if we want to amend it, that's fine. Um, I think you're okay. Whatever's easy. Yep. Um, so how about this? I would entertain a. Are you guys okay withdrawing those motions? Sure. How about this? I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of June twenty second, twenty twenty two, with the uh, addition or removal of Fred as attending the minutes. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. But I also have something for those minutes. Darn. Sorry, <laughs> I know. I tried to stop you before we got started. I tried yeah. to stop you. All right, that's fine. I'll take my second. No, no, no. Sorry. So we have a motion with, and what's the next event? So there's an executive session, and I just want it noted that I left for the executive session. Like, if you look, if, you, if you're really looking and you look at the notes, sure. I'm not listed as someone voting. But I'm present sure. in the meeting, so someone looking might just say, like, oh, I, you so know would what you I mean? Like to make, would you I like would like to make, to make a motion, motion yep. that it is noted in these minutes that I was not present for the executive session. A motion to amend. Great. A motion Second. Amend. Great. So any... Oh, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> any, any, amendment. Um, <laughs> any comments on the amendment to... Okay. Well, we'll do this as a roll call vote. Fred. Yeah. Chris. Yes. Hillary. Yes. David. Yes. I'll vote yes. Glenn. Yes. Don. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Steve. Yes. Okay. So now that we have the amended uh, motion, back to the, <laughs> the motion to approve the minutes with the removal of Fred. Uh, any further discussion on that? Okay. We'll move to a roll call vote. Fred. Uh, just to clarify, with the removal of me being shown absent. With the removal of you being shown absent. absent. Sorry. Yes. 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 Okay. Yep, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification, Fred. Chris? Yes. Hillary? Yes. David? Yes. Hello, yes. Glenn? Yes. Don? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Steve? Yes. Okay. I'm glad we didn't try to do all three together. That was no, right. All right. So I would, uh, unless anyone said, well, never mind. <laughs> I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of July 6, 2022. So moved. Second. Any questions, discussion? Amendments. I would assume we would want to have the same uh, note in the notes that Hillary nope. uh, was not present during executive session. Nope. No, you don't want that in there? No, because I was present during for January for July 6th. Oh, okay. Oh, I got it. I, I so was, was present. Different, it was different a completely executive. different executive okay, session. Okay, never mind. Yo, yeah. No, Fred, she's good. Oh, it says collective bargaining. That's why I'm... Um, no, it was for the director or of to business conduct. and finance. Collective. It does. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're good. We're good, Fred. Okay, that's right. Yeah. That's You're right. good. I'm You're sorry. good. All right, so we'll move to the roll call vote. Fred? Yes. Chris? Yes. Hillary? Yes. David? Yes. Oh, yes. Glenn? Yes. Don? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Steve? Yes. Okay. And last but not least, I would be looking for a motion to approve the minutes of December 21st, 2022. So Second. Dare ask. Any discussion or questions? Okay. Move to the roll call vote. Fred? Yes. Chris? Yes. Hillary? Yes. David? Abstain. I'll vote yes. Glenn? Yes. Don? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Steve? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. We've got those done. Uh, next on the agenda, I think Steve. we're at, yes, recording devices on student bus transportation. Fred, this was the one that you asked uh, to be added to the agenda. You want to share uh, what you wanted to go through here? Yeah, so uh, if there would be some way that we could install cameras so that they were, could record the uh, license plates of people that blow by a school bus when they're stopped, and if that's you know, quote unquote legal uh, to do this. Uh, I would love to see us be able to, I mean, it's such a safety hazard. Uh, and to me has no place, uh, you know, on our street, so to speak. So Fred, just to clarify, what you sent to me was installing a camera on the, when a school bus puts the little, 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 little red stop sign out, there's a camera on that. So if somebody blows by that stop, by, past that bus with the flashing lights, their license plate is recorded, and we have that on, on film that we could report to DMV or local PD or whatever. Is well, that correct? Yeah, and we would report every instance. And I think this was something that some other school districts are contemplating or yeah. discussing. Yes, Fred? I believe so. Okay. Um, 
open it up to some discussion here. Steve. Does Mass General Law have to, um, I know we're not a tenant. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Wait, it's a good question. But Go ahead, yeah, ask just, question. I mean, that question. would be the first thing. Can we do it? You know, to allow us, I mean, obviously, I don't want to see it. it you know, anyone blasting past the school bus. Uh, Chris? Yeah, I um, certainly want to do all we can to ensure the safety of students. Um, I just can't remember the last time I saw someone blow by them. I haven't. Yeah. I, I'm just going to say, is it a problem? All you have to do is look on social media and you, some, every, now, social every media. now and then somebody gets blasted about the silver car that blew past the, the school bus. Um, our drivers, and I'm, not, I'm speaking out of Karen, but our drivers would try to flag that license plate if they did. You know, but we don't have that device. It, it's not a it's not a bad idea. I don't know if contractually I can I can move first student to do that at this point. Um, but it's something we wanted to bring to the committee for discussion. So is it something that I guess because I want to just kind of jump on because I kind of had a similar question that Chris had, which is like, do we know how big of an issue? So maybe it's something as a next step you could just ask and say, is this something that they're seeing as an issue? Yes, and then we could have a kind of a measured response. Absolutely. I, usually we would hear about that, and I, we don't hear a lot about it. But I yeah. usually see it on social media. And again, I think it's certainly something we have to be careful with, but again, I'm, I'm wondering if some of these other districts, you know, you start talking about like city streets and multiple lane streets and cars mm -hmm. kind of going through the second lane and mm -hmm. it's, I, I, I just don't, I don't know how much it happens here, but yeah, go ahead, Fred, and then mm -hmm. I get to talk. Could we start with perhaps uh, getting a consensus opinion from our police chiefs and resource officers? And then move the discussion forward. I, you know, this is something I want to bring for the committee to be able to discuss. Can we start with first student? So, yeah. Yeah. so just, no, no, no. just in regards to you know what we're talking about. Obviously, it would be a, it would probably be done at our own cost. Uh, and I don't believe it's all that expensive. I, I just you know, I, I want to know clarifying, Fred, when you say consensus of our police department, and what am I getting consensus for? And a, the legality, whether or not they'd okay. be able to, if we gave them a video of someone blown by a school bus. Okay, I, 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 now I understand. Yep. You would take it. yep, I got you. Don? I think this topic has come, I know it has come up recently, and i trying to remember, and at the risk of searching online right now, it, it other districts have talked about it, but I think the discussion focuses around um, a future resolution or future legislation or you know a combination of getting right. authorization to legally do that so I don't uh, think that it's something us as an individual district can just you know approve and go ahead and put a camera on our buses and we're good I think this concept came as a greater you know in the safety of all districts in Massachusetts and, you know, petitioning legislation and so forth and getting approval in, in a greater sense. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm certainly um, in favor of getting more information about it, but I don't believe it's something us independently would do. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I was just going to sort of add to that. Um, if I don't know who or how, but to find out, like, if there are other so districts that do do something, something like this. Um, because my question would be, we don't own our buses, so they're for student buses, right? Like, I, I, don't, I don't, it seems like to me there's a lot of red tape to something that, like, if you really think about it, if there weren't so much red tape, it would have already been done. Maybe, there possibly, no? There are, there are 24 states where it's legal, <laughs> and As I'm only 12 are actually implementing it at this first point in time. Unlike you, I just went on a check. I'm like, yeah. they would think I'm in the wrong. So there are 24 <laughs> states where it is, it's called uh, bus arm stock cameras. There are oh. 24 that it's legal, only 12 are implementing it. Is it legal in Massachusetts? No. I didn't get that far. <laughs> <laughs> so sure does, it doesn't look like it yet. It's still early in school committee meeting. Right, right. So, so Fred, I think, you know, I think, you know, appreciate you bringing it up. I think maybe it's something that, a couple things. So one, we can probably do some more research whether what's going on from a legislative standpoint. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Simple we'll question we'll to the, to the legislator, we'll and then we can certainly more importantly we'll probably ask for a student. Yes. I mean, again, to me, I think it's just there was a pilot program in Medford in 2011. Yeah, to me, it's just like I, I don't know. I, I just I'm certainly all for the safety of our students. I just there's other things. You know, to me, it starts to there's other things we should consider too. So like, you know, I don't know. I can think of like 
Route 58 every day where there's the flashing yellow light and not in this town and you know you're in a school zone and you're supposed to be 20 and you know I got someone riding on me right. because you know they're doing 45 so like there are other issues too that I think if we're going to look at this we should probably have a more holistic deeper conversation not you know just specific to this so maybe mm -hmm. it's something that we can have a deeper conversation of whether that's a summer brain or even just a brainstorming session of how do we ensure student safety and, and work with people to do that because i think this is a this is a very specific uh, Chris, sorry. i was just thinking to your point uh, you know a, a simple big survey or something for those first student bus drivers just ask them the question just ask the question is this something is this that you see as yeah. we can do a deeper dive concern. simple thing that's and then right. and then i could talk to, to chief hanlon chief mix and see if it's legal on their side and if they would be willing to enforce it right because it might be legal, but they might not have the resources to move forward and do that. So it's a continuing right. conversation. I'm sure, and I'm sure when you yeah, and I think that's the smartest thing, Jeff, is, you know, that if locally it can be done, or if it can't be done, then the conversation's over yeah. anyway. Yeah. It does say that's to pass through legislation. Right. Yep. So. So again, and again, I think there's other issues. I'd venture to say if you're asking school bus drivers what the biggest concern is, it's going to be the motorists that have their head down on their cell phones yeah. as they're driving by them and yes. um, with the Iowa bus one kids. So there, there are other, you know, we, we have, there are other do issues we, too. <laughs> this, can I just ask a yes. question? Do we, do kids cross or do we try on our bus routes to not have kids cross? We try on our bus routes. Right? Yeah. Don't we try? Yeah, we try. try not to cross from the road. But, okay. We try as best we can to not cross from the road at all, especially on, um, main yeah. roads. So, right, like so, in my neighborhood, they close, they right. cross, but like. Right. Um, I will say that one of the biggest incidents where this takes place is in your parking lot from 636 oh, yeah. to 704. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> on the upper loop, on the upper loop, there are cars that will try to come in with buses and they are in the wrong lane. And then they think the arm doesn't mean for them or the stop sign. So it does get active in the morning. Mm -hmm. Really, if you're doing nothing in the morning and you want to come out and see how it all works. Oh, oh I come through. I yeah. don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, you every day it's fun. You do. <laughs> and you do it with a smile every Sometimes. single Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I don't you. Sometimes. It's a right. smile. We're good. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to subcommittee reports. Uh, building committee. Fred, do you want to speak on the building committee or do you want me to? Uh, I don't know that there's anything to speak of uh, since our last uh, report, but if you have anything you'd like to add, go right ahead. I was just going to add to the committee, uh, I mean, people have talked about about the, the project, the, the 5 through 8 versus 6 through 8 auditorium versus no auditorium. We spoke about it at the last meeting. The next building committee meeting is on the 24th of, of January, and that will be uh, the meeting where we are voting as a building committee on the choices. Uh, we will then right. bring bring um, that back, and then on February 14th, we will be voting as a building committee to submit the whole package to MSBA, and I'm going to ask the school committee on the 15th, which is our meeting, to vote on the grade configuration, hopefully supporting what the building committee has supported, and the package itself as well. So as, as we discussed, the building committee is going to vote beforehand and then bring that to the school committee and hopefully the school committee will support the building committee's decision. So yeah, and just a question on that. The, oh, hang on for my interpretation, if, we, if the building committee goes and chooses five through eight, it has to go through school committee with an approval. Uh, six through eight to keep it the current configuration. Uh, you know, is a, uh, you know, it's a continuation. You know, so to speak. That that's correct, but the the school committee is going to vote on the project as a whole, no matter what. Because as an endorsement for MSBA, it's good to have the school committee to endorse the project. So was that both, they can vote to endorse it. That's yeah. Well, I guess the point, Fred, and I think again we can go round and round because I think we've already talked about this. Mm -hmm. Is I think if I remember correctly, it requires the approval and signature of the school committee chair and the superintendent. Correct. And the school committee chair and superintendent have said they will not sign it without a vote of the school committee. Correct. Because we don't have any authority to do so. Unless the school committee wants to take a vote to give us the authority to do so, which you're more than welcome to do, um, we do not have the authority to sign it. So that is our position and we can go round and round and argue it, but Frankly, the two people that have to make that determination have made theirs, so it is what it is. So if you so would like to make a motion for the school committee to authorize us to sign it with the uh, approval of the building committee, by all means. 
So I just wanted to let people know those dates. The 24th is, is going to be a, a, a meeting where we determine 5 through 8, 6 through 8, an auditorium, no auditorium, or really the first vote is going to be if we're supporting a renovation addition. So there, there, there's components of that that is going to be determined on the 24th. So the question I have on that, sure. right, because I, I think there's a way to hopefully we all work together and get this done. Um, is is there is is there any preclusion from the school committee members attending those meetings as just to no, listen? No, not at all. So can you? Because again, like to me, it's I've shared the position, but I'd also I've also shared the position that I think it's really important that if we have subcommittees and we empower them to do things, that we should take the time to listen to what they did and why they did it. Mm -hmm. So I would personally like to attend those meetings, just not in any. Uh, engaged capacity, but just to listen to the discussion and figure out why are they voting the way they're voting. Mm -hmm. So I, I won't speak on behalf of anyone else, but I'd love to just, if well, however we do it, we can get those invites and make sure they're cross-posted just okay. so we can attend sure. those meetings Absolutely. and listen. Because to me, if we're not listening to those meetings, I don't want to be walking into a meeting on the 15th and we need to potentially vote something and I'm trying to catch up with the, what happened. You know, if, if they're going to discuss it for two hours, then I'd rather be there for two hours and hear. So. Are they recorded? Yes. For those of us who might but if we're meeting the next day, I just don't know. Well, the, the meeting will be on the 24th. One's on the 24th. The, the, the okay. vote's going to be on the 24th. <clears throat> yeah. Then on the 14th is the initial approval of, of everything. So they are recorded. But we'd always welcome School committee members to attend our building yeah. committee meetings. Four, four thirty on the twenty fourth. Four thirty on the twenty fourth. Uh, it's hard enough for me. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, all right, budget subcommittee. Do you have anything for, or before we do it to report? Yeah, so uh, to my understanding, the school committee met in December to do a preliminary presentation. Uh, the budget subcommittee met last week to kind of regroup and talk about what we wanted to see going forward, take some of the lessons that we had from last year's presentation and figure out what went really well and what we could improve upon. And right now we're working on figuring out what type of messaging we'd like to put out there, what we want the presentation presentation to look like and after we have our joint board of selectmen meeting tomorrow uh, we're going to regroup after we hear their feedback and figure out our plan of action from there and I believe we're meeting next week I forget the exact week date after. and time week after Absolutely. and uh, from there we'll follow up with everyone and maybe we'll have an additional meeting and uh, by the first week of February we should be good to go so that's where we're at good uh, regional agreement committee so we did meet on Monday I would categorize it as a very cordial and productive discussion um, across the board. So um, basically what we kind of did is we went around and kind of asked everyone to kind of share what each of their independent committees had for items that they thought we should discuss. So we kind of have a working list. I don't have it in, I probably have it in that folder. Um, but basically it was pretty consistent with what we talked about as a school committee, if you remember. Uh, we had some some feedback around just really invest the time to make sure we know what it says and how it says uh, we had brought up transportation we had brought up representation um, i think capital. we also came up with cap oh we had brought capital. up capital mm -hmm. and so they in addition up, to that i think it was lease lease agreements yeah. and what was the one on the bottom the last one that George wrote on yeah but right, so it was it was pretty consistent with what we came up with and so we kind of have a working list of what we want to talk about, and then we kind of move right into having conversations about um, transportation. And that conversation, which I think was, um, again, in, in, in my words, you guys, Chris, Chris. Did you mandated busing that conversation? That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, so tr transportation, um, I think that conversation was helpful because I think it built everyone's understanding, right? We have finance committee members. We have select board members. They're, they haven't been involved probably to the extent that we've been involved in some of those conversations. So I think there were a lot of good questions to kind of help get an understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, there was also, I think, an appreciation of what the administration is trying to do and the role of the school committee in transportation in kind of trying to figure that out over the next month mm -hmm. and then kind of bringing that back to the regional agreement committee so that, again, we're all kind of doing and working on the same page here. Um, yeah. The timing of billing? That was yes, cool. that was it. Yeah. Oh, yes, that was the last item. Um, and so the last item was Thanks, uh, our, the payment, how we. The payment do, schedule yeah. from the town. Right. Do the assessments. And, it, and it's, it, the payment schedule's off there. It, it doesn't really equate to when they receive their funds from taxes. So it oh, puts a yeah. strain on the town. Yeah, timing. Timing. So, so we have to reevaluate that. Um, and then after transportation, we spent some time talking about representation. I think it was the consensus of the regional agreement committee to maintain the population 
uh, methodology. So, but um, there was a uh, idea floated that we wanted to bring back to all of you that um, there was some concern about the, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and say this correctly, so Chris and Jeff jump in if I don't share the sentiment correctly, but basically that the role of the school committee should be um, apolitical when it comes to the town representation. So it was actually a good conversation, right? Like, yeah, you know, everyone as a group was kind of, hey, we don't want to get in this situation where whether it's six, four, seven, three, that we're, we're stuck voting Hanson versus Whitman because kind of the general consensus was the role of the people here are for the students, not primarily to represent their town. So again, it was a good conversation. So someone brought up the idea of, hey, what about having every vote the school committee takes uh, be required as a two-thirds vote? Um, and the rationale being that if it was a two-thirds vote, then it would kind of force kind of always having to have more than just a, you know, 6-4, six, six, four. Four, for example, Whitman versus Hanson vote. Um, so we don't have to take any action on that tonight, but kind of wanted to share it so all of you could think about that. I think at some point we'd want that feedback. We are meeting again, um, not, next, Monday. not this upcoming Monday, but the following Monday, but I don't think we're going to revisit that topic. I think we're just going to start moving into the others. So at some point, you know, probably we'll want to ask the question of this group. We'll put it on the agenda. It'll be an agenda item versus a uh, subcommittee report to kind of get everyone's feedback on how does that strike you. We did clarify that there is already a two-thirds requirement when it comes to the budget, which is kind of the big one. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think those groups were each going to kind of take that back and, and float that concept. Too. So that's kind of where we got to. I think we're going to kind of then just tick down the list and have those conversations. Yes. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say that, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it, I. I had never considered that, right? Mm. And, and, but uh, we always talk about partnerships, you know, and, and, and being good partners and stuff like that. And you know, it, it was Jim Hickey who brought that up, and uh, it just gave me pause. And you know, it's something I really want to think about. And I think that the nature of these, you know, uh, of the rack should be that it should be open and listening and trying to, you know, uh, come together on these things. So I, I, I it is something I, I want to give some further thought to. Yeah, and I think we, in, in that same line of thinking, we'd ask all of you to think about it, right? Because again, Chris and I, our role in that committee and Jeff's is to represent the will of the committee. So think about that a little bit, and we'll, uh, like I said, we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting um, so that we can kind of get a little bit more of your feedback since, you know, Chris and I had a whopping two days to digest it, but we'll give everyone a, a little bit of time to digest that. We might have well. two meetings before our next one. Yeah, three. Which is so. right, but I think the way we're sequentially yes. doing it, I think Correct. we started yeah. with mm -hmm. um, we started with transportation. We mm -hmm. talked about representation. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to move into capital, capital. costs. And so I think there's enough to keep us busy before Absolutely. we we start getting to decisions. Okay, that's the regional agreement update. Pilgrim Area Collaborative. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, our last meeting was not the first Thursday of this month, but in December, and we did vote to approve the. Um, annual report and the annual auditor's report, and those were sent on December 20th to the chair. Um, you, I guess, Chris, you would either forward that to the uh, rest of the which, committee was or... Was it the Pilgrim area or the North River? I, I, Pilgrim I area. Uh, which North one? River, Jeff represents. Oh, then I'm sorry about that. It's I got them and I am confused it. So I saw the North River yeah. in the packet and I thought that yeah. was the one I got. So no, I will make okay. sure we get that out. Um, and that can be shared also on our website. Uh, yes, absolutely. Or we can point to the uh, Pilgrim Area Collaborative website. But we, we basically just had regular business going on um, uh, in J uh, December. And our next meeting will be the first Thursday in February. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm sorry about that. But those that. two pieces were, were the biggest pieces. Yeah, I saw the email oh. came in, and then I saw what we posted, and I just assumed it yeah. was the same one. Of course. And, and I assume, we remember we were doing that as of last year for, I think, like the first time in forever. It is part of DESE guidelines uh, as the executive um, secretary put on the, the email. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. North River, and North River, the it's in the, the report's <laughs> in your packet to review the board of directors approve the annual report. So I just wanted to do that, that as a reading item. So, thank you. Chair, yes. can I add operations and capital? We had a yeah. subcommittee meeting just before tonight. Sure. Go ahead. Um, Gideon gave a great update on their progress with technology. Um, they are implementing a new tech help desk ticketing system. 
um, so it's going to be beneficial to also tying to inventory in the district when they submit tickets so that will be new um, also updating in the cafeterias um, 17 point of sale systems um, and also Jeff we had a conversation about the potential for high school students who have debit cards to pay if they want to and don't have cash on hand so that's um, not um, set in stone but looking at that option because high school students gave feedback for that um, and also, Gideon is still continuing to fine tune the quotes to the towns for the switches and the capital items that he came to us and we discussed earlier. Um, two of those switches broke this week. Yes. Right? So. Yeah, that's not a pitch to the Capital Committee, but they broke this week. Yeah. So. And then <laughs> facilities, Tim Hawley updated on just a couple things following up on the capital items. Duval Playground had a few. Um, Finishing touches being completed and the fans and the touch pad at Conley being fine tuned and finished up with some work as well. So, and yeah. we're ready for winter if it ever gets here. So, <laughs> it's okay if it doesn't. Yeah, now we're get yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I'd rather have it now than in April. Salt and sanding yeah. and plowing stuff. Yeah. All that money that we're saving. Right, save it. We're saving. Right. <laughs> All right, uh, and just a couple of important dates, and then uh, so we have our meeting with the uh, joint meeting with the member towns tomorrow. So right. Jeff will. Share what time is that? That's six thirty okay. here. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff will kind of run them through what we're thinking, and we'll get some feedback. Uh, and then uh, plug for coffee with the superintendent at Duval on four at four thirty on January eighteenth. Mm -hmm. The building committee we talked about, and then February one we have the school committee annual budget presentation. That's the public hearing, hearing meeting. Upcoming events to keep us all busy. With that, I would entertain the motion. Second. All right, Fred. Yes. Chris. Yes. Hillary. Yes. David. Yes. I'll vote yes. Glad. Yes. Don. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Have a Thank good night, you folks. Everyone. Thank you. Tomorrow night's meeting. When? Six thirty. Six thirty.